Hello everyone, how are you doing this precious evening? We are right here at the Visionary Talk Show and the excitement is really growing. Let me know how you're feeling on your side and let me know how your day has been. I've had a you know particularly hectic day, but I'm glad to be able to make it this evening. Okay, there's already a swan parfait being served, so that quite excites me. Thank you so much for being a part of the Visionary Talk Show since we started. Last week, Saturday, this is our fifth edition. Can you imagine that we've had Lady Jokotade, we've had Queen Omaome, we've had Dr. Ni Borire, we've had the firelighter, Just Ibe, and tonight we have Daniel Etim Effiong, and he's already in the studio. I was asking him how I meant to react, you know, sitting with one of my favorite actors. Um, so how are you doing this evening? You are super welcome. Let me know where you're joining us from as usual so that I can welcome you and let you know how, I'm, how excited I am to have you this evening with us. So how, how is everyone doing this evening? Where are you joining us from? I'm excited to know. Ode Theresa says, so excited to be here. Elizabeth says, good evening, everyone. Good evening. Very pleased to have you all on board. Let me know how you're doing. Let me know where you are joining us from. And uh, very shortly, we're also going to be exploring some of the biggest insights that you have learned since we started. So let me know. Okay, welcome from Ilola joining us from Lagos. You're doing good, and that is a joy for me to hear. Welcome, Ode Theresa, joining us as well from Lagos, Nigeria. Ife Christie from Ocean State, you're welcome. You're welcome. Yetunde Adeniji from Lagos, Nigeria, welcome to you. Wurala, thank you for joining us. Timi Tokwe Lori from Finland, very excited to have you. Sarah Ubana from Abuja, welcome again this precious evening. So glad to have you on board. Adeomi, you are joining us from Ibadan, Oyo State, Nigeria. Welcome and excited to have you. Ivy from Port Harcourt, Nigeria. We are very excited to have you on board as well. Thank you, Kende, joining us from the UK. Welcome, Abiola from Lagos, Nigeria. Maureen joining us from Lagos. Thank you, Koma, joining us from UK. Bo Dam, all the way from, she says, my body's in Lagos, but my bean is really in Seychelles, just like mine is prepping to actually leave the shores of this land. Welcome, Ife, from Perth in Australia. Very happy to have you, Maureen. You are welcome from Lagos. Um, Wura from Massachusetts, welcome. Excited to have you on board. Opera Coco, welcome. Moji from Canada, very delighted to have you this evening. It's a joy to do this with each of you. I have great expectations and delight about this particular session. I can't wait to see the things that we're going to learn together. Anene, you are welcome from Abuja. Yinka from Lagos, thank you so much for joining us. Tara and Omo Meayo from the UK. We are delighted to welcome you this evening. Welcome, 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 welcome. Tolu Lokwe Awuyomi from Washington, D.C. I'm very excited to have you on board with us this evening. Okay, so just that we make the best of the time ahead of bringing Daniel Etim Efiong on board, can I ask you what have been your greatest learning experiences since we started? What stands out for you? What are you thankful about? What has been the most inspiring learning experiences you've had? What are your light bulb moments? And what changes are you going to be making because of what you are learning? I want to know that I'm, I'm here for your growth. I'm really here for your transformation. So whenever you share with me the things that are happening and the learning and the experiences you are having, those things are precious to me. They help me to remember why I do what I do. Okay, so let me know. What have been your greatest learning experiences since we started? Thank you, Chibuzo Baja from Kaduna. Excited to have you, Marilinda. You're welcome. Timmy Tayo from Dublin Island. You're welcome. 
We are so pleased to have you, goodness from Ibadan. Thank you for joining us. Tara says, I've learned about kingdom finance. So good. Tara has learned about kingdom finance, okay? What have been your greatest um, inspirational insights? What are you learning that you're definitely going to be using in the course of the coming days? And congratulations to everyone who has either signed up on the self-paced uh, plan or who have actually gone ahead to apply for a group coaching or one-on-one -on -one at Visionary Compass, which is, is a 40-week accelerator program for founders, executives, and visionaries who want to clarify, launch, and scale their next level assignment this decade. So if there's something burning on your insight and you really want to produce and release it as a gift to the world, you want to scale your vision, then you should consider getting into the compass. And it will be my joy to walk that journey with you in the course of the year 2021, okay? Um, if a Christy says, my pain shouldn't define my future. She has learned that a pain shouldn't define her future. I have to forgive those who hurt me to move on. I have learned to sit at my creator's feet to get the blueprint for my vision. I love it. Olusha, is yes, super excited to welcome you, and I'm happy for you. Uh, you, Bodam Wura, you want to go have your retreat at Seychelles. That's fantastic. Tara talks about the relevance and the importance of solitude and serving, which is so, so good. The importance and the relevance of solitude and serving. Okay. Who else wants to share with me tonight? what stands out for you and what you're going to be working with, what you're going to be stewarding in the days ahead based on all that we have been learning at the Visionary Talk Show. I love it. Okay. So um, Lola says, for me, I've been great. I have been grateful to be able to identify my teachers and follow them closely, getting insights from them as I unravel my true self. So good. Yetzinde says, not everything is social media. I love that one. Not everything is social media, but staying in the quiet, not allowing my background to stop me. Wura says, strong is not wrong. Just understand you're strong. Borrowing foresight from my future to sustain my journey. I love it. Demitopa says, the session with Queen Omomi was a great one. I realized I've also been guilty of placing labels on people inadvertently. Her story opened my eyes to the subtle ways that I've been guilty of that. I love it. Tolua shares, I've learned that there's a work ethic for a visionary, so I should give my current level everything I've got. Ibi says, Mama, just Ibi's session was validation point for me. Learning that being a strong woman is actually a strength was a learning curve for me, and I'm working on maximizing that. Mary Linda says, it's been thinking big for her. Temitaya says, I must feature in my future, flood my brain with dopamine that allows me to picture the finish line. Oprah Coco says, I have to accept myself and not giving to the labels. So good, so good. Idowolukayade says, I have no excuse and I must stay with God to get my blueprint. Now that is extra special for me. You've got to stay with God to get your blueprint. Precious. Marilinda also talks about the importance of solitude. Anuluar, for good to have you here. She said, I'm already significant, accepted, and loved. No need to seek validation elsewhere. And I mean, if that is not true, what else is? So good. I'm already significant, loved, and accepted. You don't have to seek validation from elsewhere. That recognition that you are precious, you are accepted, you are loved, and that you are enough. I feel like it's where life really begins um, for every one of us. Okay, so good. That one is really precious. Bodam says, the power of solitude, courage, turning my pain into purpose, understanding true vision, be significant and not safe, recognizing my teachers, no excuses, staying humble, and so much more. I love it. Temitayo says, don't feel... Don't feel pressure to do things because others are doing it. I learned that from Lady Jokotade. This is so good. This is so good. Thank you for the insights that you're sharing. 
Okay, let's spend just a little bit of time to actually talk about Visionary Compass. Let me know if you are in or you are getting in. I just want to identify the guys I'll be rolling with at a higher level this year. You know, I shared an email. I don't know if you got it. If you didn't get it, you definitely need to get on our mailing list, right? But I shared this email with my friends and family members today. And I was talking about my transformational goals in terms of how I want to help others enter into transformation in their lives. So I talked about spiritual transformation, personal transformation, and visionary transformation. Uh, so we've got a Bible school for those who really want to step into spiritual transformation this year. Uh, we've got Immerse in a Circle, which is my coaching membership for those who want to step into personal transformation. And then we've got Visionary Compass for those who want to step into um, visionary transformation. So I just want to know who's in the visionary compass. Bodam is in. Yay! Very excited, my darling. So glad to have you. So if you're in the visionary compass, if you've put in your application, right, or you've already gotten in, or you have a real plan, you're like, I'm getting into this and I'm not delaying it into uh, next year, let me know. I love it. Olusha, your course is already in with that entire spirit, soul, and body. We're going to do this together. Ogie says, I need to get into visionary compass, but I've not been able to. You are going to get in. Don't ever forget the things that I've taught you about the principles of resource magnetism, right? You've got to envision it. You've got to be clear why you desire it. You've got to look for who can support you do it. You've got to ask for the support you require, okay? So you haven't asked me for anything, which is a sign that you've not used all the principles of resource magnetism. If you know you need to get in, then do everything to get in because I assure you, you definitely need to get in. And I commend those of you who are in, who have applied, um, and those of you who are clear that this is what you need to press into your next level. You know how I do these things. You know that for sure I bring the best for you to shift, to shift. So if you know you're ready for a shift and you want to elevate your life and your work into legacy, into impact, authority, and abundance, then Visionary Compass is like nothing you've ever seen. It's MBA grade, weighty, fresh stuff. The core curriculum itself is going to be shifting you and then you have lifetime access. So it's this kind of stuff you'll be going back to all through this decade as you elevate, right, into enthronement. I love the opera Coco is getting in. <laughs> Boom, yes. Tara is also getting into the visionary compass. I love it. So, Oge, don't forget, you use all your resources. We'll be waiting for you. Symbiote needs to get in. So get in. Do everything you have to do to get right into it. And I can say to you very boldly um, that one of the most exciting emails I've gotten, you know, are from people who are saying, DDK, I'm going to have to liquidate an investment because I know I'm worth that investment, right? So let's talk about immerse in a circle. Let's say you are unable to get into visionary compass as at now because you're saying, hey, DDK, I'm not even sure that I have really figured my purpose out. I'm not sure I've started to use a lot of the principles you teach. I feel like I still need hand-holding. I want to discover myself. I want to heal from my past. I want to set the right goals. I want to create proper schedules in my life. Then you should actually jump into Immerse in a Circle. So let's talk about those who are in Immerse in a Circle or who are going to be getting into Immerse in a Circle. I love it. Maureen says, I got into an Immerse in a Circle. Uh, can I get into Visionary Compass later? Yes, you can get into Immerse now. And then at the next opening, right, you can catch a Visionary Compass. Some people might make me open a second run before the year's over. And then it just runs concurrently. But definitely um, at, at the beginning of next year, you'll be able to get into um, Visionary Compass for sure. Fumilola says he's definitely getting into the Immersion in a Circle. Um, Timmy Topper said, I looked forward to joining, but alas, when he opened, the amount was not something I could afford 
Now, what I say about money all the time is it flows in the direction of conviction. Provision flows in the direction of conviction. So think about it again and be sure before you make the conclusion that you can't afford it. There's, it's always a value for value algorithm. So there might be something that you have that can help you get into visionary compass or there might be someone or there might be a skill that you can trade. You just don't know, but go explore it. Um, um, desire is always the ticket for possibilities, okay? Excited to have so many of you in the Immersina circle. And I am so proud of you, so pleased with you. Look at that. So many of my people already in the Immersina circle. Um, well done, well done, well done. So excited for you. Okay, Tony Adewale Gabriel, your question is not clear, please. Um, so if it's clearer, we might be able to support you and provide the answer that you need, right? IB is a loud Immersive Inner Circle member and we're excited to welcome you. We are now set. Boom, all the drum rolls, guys. We are ready for tonight. How am I supposed to behave? I have one of my fave actors in all the world. I have watched Plan B. It's annoying to my husband now because <laughs> I'll call him. I'll be like, come, come and see how, come and see. He's like, I'm not even doing that thing with you. <laughs> Daniel is definitely such a precious, precious friend. He's my brother. He's married to my sister. And then he is so excellent at, at his craft. For those of you who got the email, I loved how a number of people wrote back to me and they said, DDK, you are right. Because I was like, Daniel is T for top talent. Like, top talent. Like, is good at his craft. What? What? You know, and I get a chance to bring him in today. I'm, like, really excited. And the reason, uh, you know, we're spending this time with him this evening is because uh -huh, they've come. I can see Toyosi there. Toyosi is like T for Toyosi. Can you let us focus, please? <laughs> Welcome, my darling sister. Excited to have you on board here. Um, so well, there are a number of big reasons for me. The first is, like I said to you, he's a visionary. He's really good at his stuff. You know, in the in the in the time when um, the entertainment arena is just flooded with anybody who can just get in front of a TV. It becomes, you know, great talent is getting more and more scarce. So for you to find a person whose artistry is sophisticated, whose creativity is what putting your time and your money on, you want to sit with that person. The second big reason for me is I'm really curious. Like this guy, had an oil and gas career, like he was doing good. And then he flings that away to say he wants to act. I want to understand the, the story he sold to his parents, right? And then the days when the paycheck isn't hitting the needs, because there'll be those days, what keeps him going? What keeps him not feeling like, hmm, by now, I should I be able to build my house in Paris? But here I am pursuing passion. <laughs> when those days happen, I really want to know how he navigates it, right? And then there is a part of Daniel that may not be obvious for or to so many people who don't see him beyond the screen. But in the times that I've known this person, I feel like, you know, there is a lot of focus on personal character, the choice to be level-headed and value-driven, ethical you know, with the right principles and is a person of the kingdom. So those things just sort of really fascinate me. And I'm excited to have him on board tonight. I'm going to be channeling my inner talk show grace as I go on this journey, you know, because I'm sitting now with my mentor in the creative industry. So pray for me, Republic of Divisionaries, that I'll not disappoint you. Let me know if you're ready for Daniel. I need to see it in the comment section so that I can bring him on board. Let me know if you're ready for tonight. You're ready, you're ready. Let me know, you gotta tell me here, DDK, fire on, let's do this. Let's bring him in. He's currently, um, you know, backstage and he's waiting to come right over. So if I don't see it in the comment section, we're not gonna move forward. I'm waiting for you guys. Good job, ready, 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 ready. 
Good job. Born ready. 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 Fire on. Ready. We are ready. I love it. Mm. Temisaya says, my ready is ready. Ah, Adil Amola says, my over readiness is worrying us. I love it. So good. Anu says, let's do this. So ready, ready, ready. <laughs> Fantastic. Okay. So welcome, yes. Daniel. Very excited to have you on board this evening. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. Fantastic. Good, DDK. Thanks for having me. Fantastic. This is such a precious uh, moment for me because I'd envisioned it for quite a while. I said, I want to sit in the room with Daniel and I have all these questions um, that I feel like will not just be a blessing to me, but will be an answer for so many people as well. Uh, and we've had this extraordinary conversation, you know, since we started the Visionary Talk Show. At the heart of the reason we're here is because we do sense that we're in a time when those who carry a passion in their heart to create change and who want to use their giftings to serve the world, those sort of people need a safe space to know that their unusual journeys are not, uh, don't make them crazy and that when they get where they're going, they can stand for what is right, right? And, and it's also important to have those conversations around what it takes to master one's craft and never to play small. So those are the sort of things that definitely got me interested to listen to you. Um, and I know that we're going to have a great time together. Woo! Okay, I'm excited already. <laughs> a fresh call. Yes, okay. Yes. So my first question to you will definitely just be around what has made you into the person that you've become? And I'll, I'll, I'll tell you what I mean a little bit mm. with that, right? So I feel like in my interactions with you, I get the sense of a really rounded person. You know, I feel like you know how to be jaye jaye, like you know how to mingle and have fun. And yeah, just really, that's, I get a sense of that. But at the same time, you seem like a person who cherishes your privacy, your family oriented person, um, you love God and you are bringing your A game, you know, to your craft and to your work. So I, what I find is many times people are sort of really lopsided. You either see them on the outside and you feel right. like, wow, I want to meet this person. And then you meet them privately and yeah, yeah you're shocked. Or you may, you may meet a person who is, who's got great values, the right principles, but they are shoddy with their work, you know, and that just breaks my heart when I see those imbalances. But I feel like what I know about you makes me think about you as a balanced person. What's made you into who you become? Okay, so, uh, well, I guess it has been a sum total of my, uh, of a number of things, you know, my background, my life's experiences, my, um, my temperament, my out, my outlook, you know, so all these things have, have combined to create the, the person that I am today, you know, just a bit of my background, I, um, I'm the last of four kids, you know, uh, my father was in the army, you know, so growing up, you know, I was the last one, you know, like, you know, I, I, I was the last one that I was felt. I was the last one that did all the work, I was the last one that had to bear the, um, the weight of me because I had almost served, you know, my own one. so I'm very at peace with this, you know, um, and, and the way I was groomed. The way I was brought up, you know, I, I, um, I, I, you know, and and my, my older ones, are, my older ones, God bless them, you know, they're wonderful. Take it easy on me at all, you know, they be hard, and so you know, so so it always is part of me, right? Moving on to my background. Um, going into study school and university, of course, my service contract is well. I was always serving in every service I belonged to, 
you know, and with that came, you know, um, an opportunity to learn and to lock up things. So yes, I came with a service mindset, came to school, and the door opened for me to serve God. Okay, so the network locked him out, but I heard um, the things he started to say about his background, and you see this coming through again and again. Some of us feel like we didn't grow up with wealthy parents um, or we had a painful childhood, but what you start to discover as you go along is that a lot of the things that we need for where we are going were imputed in where we are coming from. Did you get that? A lot of the things that we need for where we're going were imputed in us from where we're coming from. And he said, talk about his background being the last of, you know, um, of his siblings and they didn't necessarily take it easy on him. When he got to school, he, he started to really serve God. So he's had this potpourri of experiences that have radically shaped, you know, um, his approach to life and the person that he's become. And for students in unbundling, if you remember when I was teaching about the press me model of personal power, which shows you the eight things about you that come together to make you who you are, right? Please let me know if you can hear me. Um, I just need to confirm that. Let me know if you can hear me because I'm not, I know that the network has logged Daniel out, but I want to confirm if you can hear me. Okay, good. You can hear me because Bodam is sort of reiterating what I just spoke to now. Okay, fantastic. And I was sharing in the press me model of personal power about R. The R in that press me model stands for, one of the R's stands for roots. And I was saying that it's important if you're going to become a powerful person who is able to utilize your highest strengths to serve others, to move your life forward, you've got to go back to your roots. You've got to take time to ask the question, what has made me into the person I, I've become? What lessons can I take from my, my parenting, my childhood, my background, you know, those experiences we had growing up? What, what, what big insights can I draw from observing how my parents navigated challenges? Even if you uh, feel like you grew up in a family with some dysfunction, and by the way, every family has a degree of dysfunction. That's the honest truth. <laughs> we just have to do better in our own generation, right? So you, you've got to go back to your roots. There are lessons in your heritage, lessons in your roots that you can leverage, that have the power to help you um, press forward and move ahead, right? And these things are truly, truly precious. They're things that I picked from my dad. They're things I picked from my mom right, um, that are still gifts to me today, helping me steward the assignment that is on me, helping me steward the giftings that is on me. So we, we just have to really start to see the, the, the precious things that hide, in, even in the midst of the pains, even in the midst of the pressures, even in the midst of, you know, the challenges um, of our childhood, if you had a rough childhood, and if you had an excellent childhood, you don't have to feel sorry about it, right? You don't have to, because I remember that when I was younger, when I just went to university and people were talking about their pains, the challenges they faced, right? When they start to talk about it, and I, I wouldn't have a lot of challenges to talk about, I would feel so bad, I would feel so guilty, like, would I be able to contribute to the world because I've not had a really rough childhood? You don't have to feel bad for what you were given, but you've got to utilize what you were given and leverage what you were given. And it would always, always, always be a blessing. Everything we need for where we're going is a seating in where we're coming from. Or a lot of things that we need for where we're going has already been imputed in where we're coming from. And that's the principle of roots. So there are many precious things hiding in the midst of pain. There are many lessons that you can learn from your roots. And the truth is every family, I believe this, and psychology actually proves and confirms it, has a degree of, of dysfunction. You, you, we just need to continue to improve on the previous generation and keep doing better and ensure that um, our personal 
you know, limitations do not create pain and and uh, crisis for those who are coming after us. That's just what is, you know, that's just what matters. So I'm sure that we are going to be, yes, but I'm exactly, you don't have to feel bad if you didn't have a rough childhood. <laughs> it's so real. I struggled with that for a long time because I felt like you've got to have a story before you can create an impact. But it's not only stories of pain that create an impact, stories of, of, of joy. So far, you can connect your story to a meaning and a purpose. You're going to be able to create an impact. You're going to be able to transform um, the lives of others who meet you, right? And it's, it's everything that we've got in our lives. They are intentional tools of transformation, transforming people, transforming institutions, transforming society. And this is a, a very important time in our life and in our history. Wherever you are in the world, today more than ever before, there's the need for visionaries to arise. Who's a visionary? A person, any person who has caught a glimpse of a future reality, of a future possibility. Anyone who has caught a picture sitting in the womb of tomorrow about an outcome that doesn't exist today but can exist, right? The moment you catch that and you make a commitment, a 100% commitment to become a co-creator of that future possibility, then you are a visionary. So a visionary catches an image, a picture of a future possibility and commits themselves to becoming co-creators of that future, right? And it doesn't, it doesn't have to be like rocket science. It doesn't, have to be, it doesn't have to be something like a tech startup. If you can leave things better than you found them, you're a visionary. If there's a burden you carry today for an area of society, a problem that challenges you and you want to see it fixed, that is the beginning of a life of vision. And you want to begin to ask yourself, is this problem by which I'm burdened? connected to the purpose I carry for the world. Many times you are only burdened by the things that have a linkage to your purpose, 90% of the time, I'm telling you. So that's what makes you a visionary. If you, catch, if you catch a possibility that exists in the womb of tomorrow, because this is the way things get better in the world. God puts a possibility in the womb of tomorrow. God puts a, a future reality in the womb of tomorrow, something that can be, and releases resources and provisions for it to be. He houses it in the womb of tomorrow. Then he goes about tapping people based on their unique uh, assignment and their unique endowments he, he creates connecting lines between you and the kind of future that you are wired to create. And I hope I'm not saying too much. I hope you catch it. God puts future possibilities in the womb of tomorrow. God puts resources for what can be in the womb of tomorrow, right? And then he begins to go about tapping people who have that endowment, enablement, and wiring to create that future because it's not every kind of future I'm naturally gifted to co-create. There are some things you can do that I can do. And it starts to awaken those desires in the hearts of people. Not everybody responds, but the one who responds and says, I want to create that future, that thing that is possible that God has reserved in the future. I want to partner with him to birth it on the earth. And then you start to meet the resources that have all the while been there. Okay, my brother is back. Hey. I'm so sorry, Welcome network. back. I don't know what was happening to my network. I'm using two different ones and both I just know. started crazy at the same time. Sorry about that. Yeah. It's all right. It happens to me a lot okay. as well. Yeah, so welcome back. What we started to talk about, I, I, I was I started off sharing from your what you were saying about how your childhood being the last of your siblings. I'm not necessarily taking it easy on you, getting into school and just uh, throwing yourself at the things of God and all those experiences started to shape you. 
and come together. And I started to say that many of the things that we need for our future are usually included in our past. You see, so it looks like a lot of the things we would require to become people of purpose and power are imputed in our growing up by experiences. And I was saying that if you've had a painful experience, there is purpose in that pain if you're able to make that conversion. But I also then said the one that we don't hear a lot. If you've not had a painful past, you don't have to feel guilty about not having a rough childhood, right? Because I used to feel guilty for the longest time, like, would I be able to create meaning in the world? Because I don't know, I've never had all these, a lot of the experiences people talk about, like, I had a decent childhood. I traveled the world. I was happy. I was treated like a princess. You know what I've healed from all that. So far, you can convert your, your story um, into a tool for transforming lives. You can, you can have meaning in your life as well. And that's what counts. So I, I'm going to do the question all over again so that you can take it from the beginning. <laughs> so again, the question is, why are you the way you are? Why are you balanced? Why are you level-headed? Why? You, yeah. Uh, I'm going to I'm going to race through that again. You know, I said I was speaking about my background. I was speaking about you know my position amongst my siblings, how I'm, I'm the last of four, and how I learned service in my family. You know, I wasn't the last one that was spoiled. I was the last one who served. You know, I also learned uh, with, with and with that service mindset, I also got into uh, school, into secondary school and into university, and you know it was. Um, it was easy for me to serve to serve God in in school, you know. So I learned service in the kingdom of God through that as well. Um, again, I also said that I don't know. I, I think it was at this point that the network started to go up. I also said that I also uh, have been conditioned by certain things that I have experienced in life, certain hardship that I have experienced, you know. Um, and 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 what you said is totally valid. You know, you don't. Um, don't feel guilty if you haven't experienced hardship of any kind. You know, um, you are equipped, like you said, for for your journey. You know, so what whatever your experience is, you are being equipped. You know, whether it, it is pain, whether it is joy, whether it is abundance, opulence, whatever you know your back, whatever is embedded in your background and your life's experience is what you need. Is what you will need. And because we all have different paths and different, you know, different destinies. You know, we are all equipped differently. So yeah, so um, uh, you know, lost my mom when I was when when I was young, very young. You know, um, uh, my dad went to prison also when I was very young. So I grew up yes. with my grandparents. I, I grew up going, um, you know, as a child. I was I was being, you know, um, I was taken from one family house to another, you know, just so that people could accommodate me and all of that. Um, it was, it was, it was, I, I was shielded, yes, but, but it was obvious that it, growing up, I felt like an outsider many times. Mm. And of course, that contributed to my, to my outlook in life because I am fine with solitude. You know, I, I am totally at home with being, you know, not recognized, you know, so mm. and, and back, you'll come back to see how I deal with, how I deal with fame. You know, to come back to see how I deal with all the attention, you know, and all of that, you know. Um, also, my experience again, you know, being being an engineer, studying engineering, being great at engineering, and all of that. And on the one side, and on the other, on on, on the other side, being passionate about the arts. So I had these two different worlds almost you know, colliding in me, you know, uh, Jacob and Esau situation in me, you know, mm. having to wrestle for my destiny, you know, and, you know, so all these experiences combined to create, you know, the, the, the person I am today. I love it. <laughs> Fresh, you. so good. That will, that will sort of lead me to ask my next question around what you've spoken about, um, solitude being okay being by yourself and how that impacts on even um, how you are just content with bypassing the attention. Because I hear all the time, 
uh, people like you, you know, who are famous, who are fine, who are doing well, who are uh, beauty queens. Yeah, a lot of, a number of my friends who are in those spaces, talking about how fame is a big burden. How there is mm -hmm. almost this, and we, we talked about it with Queen Omar Miyakini Fessi, and we, we, we found that there is even a way that the world can create an identity theft for a famous person where right. they don't even know how to own who they are and they get lost in an image and an illusion. And right. they live many, many years just playing this unhealthy game without ever finding themselves and being able to live their best lives. So yeah. how do you navigate that? How, it's so slippery. How do you stay yeah. sane? Yeah, yeah. I think, I think for me, right, um, you know, uh, piggybacking on my last uh, answer to your question, I think my life has, or my experience has sort of grounded me, you know, I, I, I have, I have an interesting sense of, of, of who I am, right? Mm. And the way I see myself is totally different from the way people see me, from the way, you know, um, fans see me and i have this i have this um issue for the longest time that i couldn't and if when i see a fan right i immediately subconsciously shut them out because they're two different worlds they're two different worlds my world my personal world and this this persona that people have created and and i remember remember us talking about this some time ago they're, they're two different people you know, DDK. There's the Daniel who's who's me, you know, and there's the Daniel that people see and people, you know, might want to adore and might want to honor and might want to, you know, so that's a different person. I'm, I'm not that person, you know. And mm -hmm. and like I said, my experiences have, um, have conditioned me to be grounded. And honestly, you know, I, I shy away from all of this. I, I'm, I'm, I, I understand in my mind who I am, and so, um, so it doesn't get to my head, you know, I go, I, for me, you know, so that, and, and yes, I'm going on and on, but there are two kinds of people, right, in this, in, in the industry. There are people who are here for the fame and the glam and, you know, all of that, which is great, you know, and I appreciate people like that because, you know, they're the ones that make our industry glamorous, you know, but for me, right, I'm about the work, you know, I'm, a, I'm, I'm about that work. I'm about um, the craft. You know, mm. so that is why that is why I react to things differently. That's why when I get praise and when I get, you know, oh, you were so good at this, oh, you were so good at this, I hear you, but it almost like, yeah, it almost like it comes in and and, and it has no effect really on me. It, I look at my work and I'm very critical about my work. Mm. I'm, I'm, I'm like, how can I do this better? On set, let me tell you how it works for me on set. On set, I hear action, I go into you know my business, perform, 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 and I hear cut. Immediately I go, immediately I hear cut. I'm self-analyzing. I'm like, okay, what did you do? Can you do it better? Can you do it? Can you okay, okay, no, 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 okay. When I watch myself on screen, I go, oh no, Daniel, you should have done this better, you should have done this like this. Okay, I'm immediately building myself for the next opportunity I have to do mm. it better. For the next opportunity I have to do it better. I have to, so it's almost like I'm my own greatest competition. I have to, you know, keep wow. myself. Versus, I've met people who immediately, the, immediately um, the director or whoever goes action and goes cut and they go back and they watch the playback and they just go like, man, I was so dope. I'm so cool, man. I'm so cool. I'm so cool. <laughs> I promise you. They watch a film and then they're already high-fiving themselves and they're like, yeah, man, I'm the ish, you know. Uh, and so wow. those are two different paradigms, two different sets of people. And while I appreciate, you know, that other's thinking, I'm not that person, you know. So, so, so mm. that's... Who I am. That's who. That's what keeps me grounded. You know, it's it's the basics. It's 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 the work ethic. You know, you have to understand. You have to keep pushing yourself. You have to set standards for yourself. You have to, and and also you have to understand that fandom is very fickle. You see, these people who praise you and love you and adore you. You know, 
things can switch like this. So you have to not fall for the hype. You have to understand. Wow. Even Jesus understood it. Jesus understood people and understood that this thing that they are praising you now, and they are, saying, they are the same people that say crucify him, crucify him. Hi. You have to understand the nature of, of people and fandom and, 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 and all of that. You have to understand the game. If not, it will destroy you. And that's why many people in our industry, many people in, in entertainment are very unhappy because they, they, they fall for it. They fall for all of that. Do, for those of you who want to come into this this uh, this industry, don't fall for it, guys. Don't fall for it. Keep your eyes on the ball. Focus. Focus on the work. Do it. Improve yourself. Sometimes you get praised for it. Sometimes you get you, you won't get praised. You know you get you know flack for it. Just keep going. Okay. Just keep your eyes on the ball. Keep improving yourself and keep growing. What? Yeah. <laughs> now you know what you said about. Two different kinds of people in the industry. Yes. Daniel, let me say to you straight up, it's really two different kinds of people in the world. Wow. Okay. Yes. Okay. Very, yes. true. Very true. I'm telling you because yes, yes I'm I'm sure. other industries as well. Yes. 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 I'm okay. telling you. I do yes. meet in my coaching work. I meet people who have an extremely robust estimation of their oh, work and who they are. I'm telling you, who really feel like that thing you said about I'm the ish. Yes. yes. And even when they come into coaching calls, now they've paid me a lot of money, right? But they don't even let me guide them. Yes. They just want, so I just become a listener and I'm good at listening. Their own voices. Wow. Yes. Okay. They just enjoy it. So if you pay me to listen to you, that's also okay. I'm here for it. I'll just be sipping my food juice. They will go on and on. Even when you're like, I think you should do this. Oh, I've already done that. I uh, No, 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 I got it. I, okay, no worries then. So it's, it's. I feel like this is one of, this is going to be one of the greatest mental deliverances happening here today. Yes. yes. Recognition. And we all can fall for it. So I love how you're sounding the alarm like, you don't fall for it. Don't fall for it. Because the, the, Listen no, to you. Okay, so so I mean, it's a human thing. It's a human thing to get carried away with the glam. It's very human. Yes. It happened to the apostles when they came to Jesus and they said, okay, please, in this arrangement, uh, let's sit down yes. by us. Je Jesus had to tell them that you guys don't even know. It's not about that. It's not about the glam, man. It's not, it's about the work. Can you carry the burden? Can you really carry? Yes. Uh, PDK, I, I cringe at the, you know, Toyosi knows. Like Toyosi will sit with me in, a, in in the cinema, right? And this is what I, this is what I do. I'm like this, like. <laughs> I'm like oh, oh, oh. She's like Daniel, behave. Daniel, fix your face. That's what she tells me. Fix your face. Fix your because I'm like, no, that can be better. Come on, no, this can definitely be better. And you know, you have to find the right balance, right? Of also trying appreciating your own work and saying, yes, yes. I've done this. You know, I'll let it go and I'll focus on the next thing. You know, give yourself a pat on the back. You've done it. Let's move on to the next thing. But do not fall for the hype of believing your own, <laughs> believing your own hype. Don't believe when people, yeah, when people overhype you, when people puff you up. No, it's a trap. It's a trap. Yeah, it's so good. I love it so much. And I, I feel like this is such a defining part of the conversation. You know why? Fandom. The, the concept of fandom isn't happening only in art and entertainment. It's not just happening in the creative industry, right? Yes. There's that yes. whole thing going on in every arena. If you've got a platform, yes. if you're making a difference, if you have a following, if you've created a digital product that blesses lives, if you've yes. written a book, if you're pastoring yes. a local assembly, if you're leading a team, if you're inspirational, I'm telling you. Yes. So, yes, yes. 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 My husband and I, we, we make the jokes between ourselves. It doesn't matter what anybody thinks of me. I know yes. where I am and I know where I want to go. Yes. Right? You're responsible yes. for your perception. I'm responsible yes. for my ascension. That Whoa. one is my yes. responsibility, is my business. So, so I feel like 
any visionary who wants to be here for the long haul yes. really needs to embrace this mindset. And I love how you brought the balance. Um, among my one-on-one -on -one coaches, our one-on-one -on -one clients, we have something that we call um, SAS. It's and I'm going to I'm going to bring her out now. She would have my neck. It's the Sheye Ashiru syndrome. There is one of us, he, and she's on this call. She's such an achiever, right? She's she's a great executionist, but she does not pause to ever say, wow, okay, that was a, a work well done. She's just like, on to the next thing. So I'm like, mm, chill, there's got to be that fine balance in there where you say there is more, but this was this was some good work. Well done, right? Look at her. She's yeah. one saying, I know where I am and I know where I'm going. <laughs> so I love how you added that balance where yeah. you say, hey, don't fall for the hype, uh, but at the same time, learn to celebrate the milestones and the growth process, exactly, because it's also really important. Fantastic. This is so good. I want to go to that. There was something you said I thought it was so powerful. When you said it felt like there was Jacob and Esau, and you had mm. to fight for your destiny. Because mm. there's so many people mm. in that place where they've got a paid job that they actually love, but they also mm. have something burning in their hearts that they almost mm. feel like their job by imprisoning them and they don't know where. How, how does a visionary person who is catching feelings for something else? You know, because <laughs> like it's almost, yeah, it's almost like a relationship. It will start toasting <laughs> you, calling you, yeah. you know, you're not thinking yes. about yeah. it. So if I'm catching feelings for something else, if my passion is growing uh, to create change in a certain way or whatever it is, how do I navigate where I am versus what is possible and where it could be? How did hmm. you do that? That's, that's, a, that's a deep question, DDK. And, um, and for people, it happens differently. You know? So mm -hmm. I won't come up here and tell people um, this is how it works. You know? and I, 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 what I can say is this is how it worked for me. You know? and, and you can pick. You can pick fillers and you can pick signs on how it might also work for you. Mm. But the long and short of, and this is what, and this is what um, um, God told me clearly. He said that okay. So there was a time. Let me, let me just go back in time. There was a time in university. I was um, I was in the I was in the valley of decision. You know, I was I was torn between these two worlds. I was great at engineering in school. I was acing my courses. I was like top five in my class, engineering class. But on the other hand as well, I'd be in class and my, I'll be so burdened by the fact or by the knowledge that I won't use this thing in life. Wow. You know, I knew then that it was so impressed in my heart that I'll be in class and I'll be crying because I, I, I just knew that this, was it me, you know? So, so I, I, I remember, you know, this day I went to the field. We had this open field in uh, Federal University of Technology, Mina, where people go to pray. So I was, in, I was on the field one of those days and I was praying and, and God told me clearly, you know, that you would make films. And I was like, but how? I couldn't see it. I couldn't, so, so it was, it was I, I, couldn't, I couldn't see how that possibility was going to come to pass, you know, like Mary, when the, when the angel told Mary that you were going to get pregnant, and Mary couldn't see it. Maybe it was impossible to have And I said, and I said, how he said, he said, the way, the way, the way, the way, the way, the way the child is formed in the womb of a mother, you do not know. This is how, you know, your visions will come to pass. This is how you're going to make sense. The way, the, the way you don't know how pregnancy works, right, to the physical wow. eye. Way that it is going to happen to you. And then I didn't think anything of it, but now I just understand it now so profoundly. But yeah, so that was the that that was the word I got from God, you know. And and yeah, so so that was several years ago. Fast forward, you know, several years back. What what happened was that I was impreg I was impregnated with the vision. Hey, I, was, hey. I, was, I was carrying something that I didn't know how to express it. But as time went by, this vision in me grew, 
it kept growing, it kept growing, it kept feeding and it kept growing until it got to a point where it, I had to push, I had to birth what I was carrying, right? And, and, and just to answer that question, how will it work for you? Someone listening there, someone in the group there thinking, how does it apply to you? It's the way of the spirit. You know, you don't know. And, and I, I can tell you how it worked for me, and I will in a moment. But I can't say that is exactly how it worked for you, how it will work for you, because it's a spirit thing. It's not a, it's not a this is the five steps to go about. Well, you could do that, but it's highly guided by walking with God, walking with the spirit of God, and how God deals with you in your own, in, in his own way, right? So this is how it happened to me, right? And please, DDK, feel free to cut me off at any time. I want, you know, because this is, yeah, um, just to guide me. But I, I, want to, I want to just narrate my story and how we, how we played out in my life. Um, so so when, when I heard that, when I heard that word that, you know, um, it will happen. And, and the full scripture is, um, also, the way bones are formed in the womb of a mother, you do not know. Also, how the wind blows, you do not know where it cometh or where it listed. That, that's the full scripture that dropped. At the time, also, I didn't know of this scripture. I had to go find it. I had to go find it. Like, oh, this is actually scripture, you know. Anyways, so, um, yeah, so, so when I got that, I'm like, okay, cool, you know. So I still stayed behind in school, you know, still doing engineering. And then, of course, I told my parents that, okay, look, uh, I'm burdened in my heart, guys. I want to leave engineering and I want to go. At the time, I was prepared to go and write WAEC for art. You know, <laughs> you know, when you're in secondary school, it's either art class or science class. Yes. Exactly. And I did science. So I was, I was so burdened that I was prepared to go back and redo my, redo GSE or redo whatever that <laughs> is, WAEC again for art. You know, and they said, oh, Daniel, no, you know, they held family meetings. They were like, no, Daniel, just calm down, finish your engineering course. And, you know, when you're done with engineering, you can do whatever you want with your life. That was in my second year in university. By my third year, first term, third year in university, the school itself ejected me. The school came out with a list of 150 cult members they wanted to expel from school and my name was on that list of 150 court members to be expelled out of nowhere ddk out of i was so diverse out of nowhere the school itself ejected me and yeah what are you my saying life was, my life was thrown into commotion like i was so confused at the time i didn't understand it I didn't, I thought, man, God had forsaken me. I thought, you know, my life was over. My entire fellowship, because I was in FCS, some fellowship called FCS, Christ, uh, Fellowship of Christian Students. They didn't understand it. No, yeah, it was, long and short of it, it was shocking and heartbreaking to all of us. Court member, Amy, from where? How? <laughs> wow, you know. And, um, and at the time, I had to leave school. And that was my first journey. Remember, I tried to leave school. My parents said, no, stay in school. The school devised a way to kick me out for whatever reason. Now I understand that it was God's hand guiding me. But then I was in such a dark place and I was so depressed that I couldn't see the light. I couldn't see God in any of it. So for someone listening, you're in a dark place. It's, 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 it's the hand of God upon you. The hand of God is with you, even in that darkness. Okay, guiding you and leading you. Okay, so yeah, so um, I left school. For the first time in my life, I had the opportunity. Yeah, I was out of school. I had the opportunity to venture into the arts. While I was in university, while I was studying chemical engineering, I was doing, I was acting in fellowship, you know, in church, I'd act, you know, here and there. I was in the drama group. I was leader of the drama group in my fellowship. So I had the opportunity to, uh, you know, um, exercise my talent and gift. But this was the first time I had the opportunity to do it outside school, outside church, outside of the fellowship. I put in for a reality show called I'm Still Mortal Box Office. It was the first time I was going to be on TV. That year was the first time after I left school, I, 
it was even during that period I saw the auditions, uh, I saw the forms for the auditions and I filled it. And immediately I got selected to be, uh, to come for the next level of auditions. I went for it, I got selected again, next level. I think I did like three different levels of auditions in Abuja, in Lagos. I just aced all of them, pop, pop, pop. And I found myself less than maybe a month after I got kicked out of school, I found myself in Amsterdam Malta box of this reality show on national TV. Yes, I found myself on national TV. And I was like, wow, you know, so it was, it, for, for me, I, did, I still didn't see the hand of God in it. It was later that I, I, I realized that, wow, look at this. It is the spirit of God within me, literally like I was being buffeted in the wind, like just directed without knowledge of it, right? So at the time, I'm like, okay, great opportunity for me to get distracted and forget about this whole scenario in school. I went into the reality show. After the reality show, spent about three months, I came out after everything, post, uh, pre-show, show, and then post-show came out. Used my earnings from there to go, into, to, go to film school in Joss, right? After I, I think I came feet or fourth on the show, got some money, went to film school in Joss. I was just going, long and short. After about two years, the school called me back and said, oh, they had figured out you know, whatever, and they were calling me back to come complete my engineering course. Obviously, my parents came back. Ah, you have to go and finish this engineering. Is this engineering? What is going on? I went back after two years of being immersed in entertainment and, 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 and that whole world, two years. I went back to engineering and finished my engineering course, right? At this point, most of my mates had graduated. This is like two years after. I was so, I was still depressed. I still didn't see God's hand with this DDK. I was so depressed that I, I, all I could think of was all the time I'd lost. Oh, you know, my mates had graduated. Oh, I was this, I'm, I'm behind. I went back, got my engineering degree, served, served in Lagos, started working for an oil and gas firm in Lagos, right? And then the burden started to come back. Remember, all this time was almost like the burden disappeared. And I was yeah. like, you know, in this yeah. entertainment, just living my life. I went back to engineering, finished my course, came out, started to work in engineering, earning money, and then the burden came back. That same burden I felt in school back then came back. The burden didn't leave because <laughs> when God wants to move you, when God wants to move something in your life, he comes with a burden. When he wants to start work, he comes with a burden, right? I started to feel the burden again. And then I knew, you know, something had to give. You know, I spoke to my mentor, my uncle, who at the time was this huge man in oil and gas in Nigeria. And he was like, Daniel, you have to make a choice. I'm sure at the time he was scaring me into abandoning in entertainment, right? And he said, Daniel, you have to make a choice. You can't go to work nine to five and after work hours, you go to set your acting and doing entertainment stuff. No, you decide, right? Choose, do this acting thing as a, as a hobby, as a, as a past time, right? Focus engineering and build a career. You have to make a choice now. And then I went away, fasted and prayed. Still, the burden was there. I couldn't chase it away. I knew what I had to do was quit my job. This time I was wiser. I didn't tell anyone. Before, yes. when I was going to do something, I told everybody. Now, everybody. I, yes. I, I didn't tell anyone. I quit my job first. After I quit my job, that's when I told people. And guess what? This miracle happened. I was, for a long time, I've been planning, okay, to quit the job, you know, I plan, and then I was talking to other people as well to try to get soft landing. Because for the longest time, I was afraid of, informal the informal sector right i was afraid of not having a nine to five i was i was i was i i didn't know how i was going to feed you know in the informal sector right so i was very comfortable in the nine to five so i wanted soft landing so i started to speak to a few people that i knew were in the informal sector but were in entertainment but had some kind of structure in entertainment right so um I started to speak to then, uh, Jadi Sola Shiberu was at the time. 
speak to her about getting a job with Danny TV. And she's like, yeah, Daniel, we're working on it. And I didn't hear back from her for, the, for, for a while. Now, the day I decided to quit my job, the day I dropped the letter, I walked to HR, longest journey of my life, walked to HR yeah. and dropped the letter to her, walked back to my chair. The moment I sat down, an email came up from Jadio Shiberi inviting me for an interview. That same moment, when I quit my engineering work, that I promised that same moment was when the email came, come for an interview at Indani TV. I was like, it was almost like it was waiting for me to make that decision. Yes. And without that decision, I wasn't going to get a break. I went for it. That's, that was my first job in entertainment as a content producer with Indani TV. Now that's the story. I'm sure there are several nuggets you can pick here and there. Like I've, I've had talks before where I've put it into like a structure, but that's the story. You have a burden, you take action. You take action and you pursue it and you don't, you, you don't back down. Take action and keep walking. Um, a, word, a word dropped for me during that period before I quit my engineering job. I was praying for a word, you know, and again, a word came to me and said, Go. You know, the word was simple, go. But the scripture that came with that word was Jesus telling Peter to come. Peter was on the boat. Jesus was walking on water. And Peter told Jesus, if, it was, if it's you, tell me to come. And Jesus said, ah, come, I'm not afraid of you. Come, come. You know, and, and that was the word, you know, that he needed. And he left the comfort zone of that boat. He left what he knew. He left that world that was secure. That was the nine to five. That was the perfect condition. That was what he was used to. That what he had mastered. And he stepped out and he walked on water. He wow. kept his eyes on me. That, anyways, um, um, that, that's pretty much that. That's pretty much it for me, DDK. You know, um, you have a burden, and you take action based on that burden, and you don't hold back. You don't. You keep pushing. You keep pushing. I mean, don't get me wrong. There have there, there have been times when um, I've had it rough. But I promise you, it was rough, but not ever rough in a way that I, I ever regretted taking that decision. Exactly. That decision of my life. And even in the tough times, I'm like, yeah, babe, let's go. Yes. Let's, I, I'm born for this thing. Let's, let's go. Let, let's take it on. Wow. You know? Yes, that's my story. Come that's on, my story. Look, ah, come God has been working with people for long ago. I'm not looking at like that. Ah, come, I'm not. What was my story? Because <laughs> what yeah, are that's you my story. me? What? Yeah. That's what my story. That you are a cultist. Then you now went to film um, school. Uh. <laughs> oh, God, yeah. I have questions for the Lord this night when I leave this call. <laughs> <laughs> hey, wait, last thing that was my story. What was my story? No, no, no. These are my What? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. I want so to ask what... exactly. Okay, go, go on. Bolan is asking the question I wanted okay. to ask you next. Next. Okay. How did he deal with that wrong label of being called a cultist? Because I'm okay. sure that if there are some church members, they'll be like, it's not that guy that was wearing tight, yeah. tight shirts. <laughs> He was not going to give it I'm telling you. <laughs> okay. So, so um yeah. So, so, yeah. so it happened at a time when let me just let me just you know um I'll paint a picture for you. I was I was heavily involved, I was an executive in my fellowship. I was a general so the the the, the fellowship is first of all the largest fellowship in the entire school. It has 12 main executives and about maybe 50 something general executives i was in the 50 something general executives you know so so i was a worker i was an exco in that general executive council right i had been nominated to be in the main executive council of that fellow so it was like i was not just like uh, uh what, what's it called i, I wasn't just a like, a member of the crowd. I was really involved in the fellowship. So people knew me with the fellowship, right? People knew me as a Christian. People, 
And I wasn't even a party boy. Like, if it's even now, self that I, I attend parties. Then in school, I wasn't even a party boy. I was like strict. It was, it was school, classwork, church, and then hostel. That was my life. I, I, you wouldn't see me in a party. None of that, right? I was, I was, I was a, the boring guy, the goody two shoes guy. That was me. That was me in school. Now finding that I would be in a list of cultists, cult members to be eradicated from the school was huge, right? And no one, no one understood it. The question I always got was, but why you? Uh, uh, but why you? Yeah, but why you? Yeah, yeah, of all the people in the whole fellowship, is you, why? My father said, my father thought, okay, Daniel, were you hanging around with the wrong? Daniel, we have to the Daniel, we have to pause. Your wife okay. says there are pictures to prove this. This thing you are sharing with us. She's having pictures. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Right. right. So, so yeah. So um. So so at the time, no one understood it. Very few people believed me. That in fact, if at all, anyone believed me at all, you know. And and so so it was it was a very dark place in my life. I was depressed. I was really really depressed. I didn't see the hand of God in it at all. How did I deal with it? I think so. So this was this was the cycle for me, right? When it happened, I first didn't believe it. I said, ah, impossible. So I I, I, I prayed. I prayed and prayed and, until they literally. First of all, the, 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 there was a list. I, I was hearing the rumors about it, and I didn't believe it. They said, oh, Daniel, your, your name is on the list. I didn't believe it until I actually saw the list put on the notice board around campus. That first of all, I believed it. And then they kicked me out. They said I couldn't write exams, you know. That's when the depression set in. That's when the depression set in, when I saw my mates writing exams. And, and the funny thing is people moved on. So of people course. got over the shock of it quickly. That, ah, Daniel, you, have you heard what happened to Daniel? Have you heard what happened to Daniel? People moved on from that initial shock, right? A few people told me, a few people would call me and say, look, Daniel, there's no great man that wasn't, that, that, that didn't go through what you're going through now. Someone said, told me that specifically, that even Jesus was accused wrongly. Even Jesus was spoken of and accused wrongly. Be of good chair. You know, you're in the company of greatness. Don't worry, then. But then, all, all those things I was hearing, it didn't, mean, it didn't mean anything to me. It didn't mean anything at all, you know, because I was in a very dark place. And then, um, so the depression set in. After the depression set in, what I, what I think helped me greatly was the word that I got from God. So, of course, mm -hmm. and, and, and what helped me also was my dad also knew God. So my dad told me, look, Daniel, go to God and ask him what is going on. He mm. said that, go and ask him what is going on. So of course, I went on the fast and I prayed and said, really, what was really the issue? And then a scripture came to me. Just before I woke up, numbers, I forget the exact, exact um, scripture now, but it was the story of, is it Balaam and the donkey? Is it Balaam or Balak and the donkey? Balaam and the donkey. Balaam and the and donkey. Balaam and the donkey. And Balaam was on that donkey, riding that donkey, that faithful donkey that he has used all these years. And the donkey has never, ever failed him. And that faithful day riding that donkey, the donkey turned and crushed his foot against the wall and cheat the donkey. The donkey crushed his foot again and he was so frustrated at the donkey. And the donkey opened her mouth and said, haven't I served you all these years and I've never failed you? So the word for me was, this thing that you're so bothered about, this education, this engineering that you're so dreamed, that you're so bothered about that has failed you, it has never failed you. So don't you think there's something that the thing is saving you from in front of you? Like this wow. education has failed you. Isn't there something that is standing in your way? That it that is saving you from, and then that's when I got peace, because there was an angel that was going to strike him if he continued on that path. If he had continued on that path, he would have been struck down by the angel. So that was the word that I got, and I promise you, again, you know, God deals with us differently. 
sometimes for me those words thank you numbers 22 21 to 30 i get those words and it gives me so much clarity and so much peace you know and that's how i got my peace that's how i and guess what the labels dropped off it, People, you know that that fandom thing that I said was people. The same people that said, "Ah, cult is hey, this boy fell at you," are the same that man. In fact, people don't even remember. I I remind people that remember when this thing happened to me. Those my 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 set mates that I thought had gone ahead of me for two years and had gone in life and had had two years became like nothing, became nothing yeah. like God his speed, and I cut off. On my path of purpose, just like that, you know. So that's that's that, that's how I dealt with it. The word came, helped me. You know, it was still dark. It was still, you know, it was still a difficult moment. But it gave me it gave me courage, you know, and it gave me peace that you know God's hand was with me, guiding me through it. Wow. <laughs> wow. Please, I know. Yeah, I know it's a lot. I know it's a lot. I know it's a lot. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't yeah, know just know. Just, just know, guys. I mean, I, I, as I'm, I'm speaking like this, right? And because it's DDK, sometimes it, it will just feel like gist, right? But I just hope someone is learning something. Just know that whatever you're going through, right? Whatever you're going through, you know, once you're on that path of purpose, God's hand is with you. Don't worry about it. In a matter of time, you see, there'll be a change. So don't worry about it. Once you're on that path of purpose, in a matter of time, you see the change. So true, so true. Mo said what I wanted to say, to be honest. She says, this story deserves its, its own film, honestly. So uh, those of us <laughs> body artists, we're here, actor, actresses and actors, uh, we, we are here for it. I can be one of the fellowship people. Uh, we can have, I mean, yeah, we're all here. Whenever you want to put it into a short film, we're here for it. Bodam says, once you're on, the, on that path of purpose, exactly what you've shared now, God's hand is on you, and that is so powerful, so good. I want to ask you, Daniel, about relationships. And I believe that is going to be relevant even for other visionaries in other arenas. But there is so much competition. I'm not in your sphere, but I get a sense of it. It feels to me like whenever uh, what people trade for wealth or for money is their skills in terms of their creative endowments, it gives room for, and, and people have to be chosen over themselves because it's the case of the most talented, the most creative, right? The most maybe beloved that people really see on a cover of a, a cinema script and they'll be like, I want to watch that. So it makes people chosen over themselves in that sense. You know, you see what I mean because it's all artistry. How do you navigate undertones of pretense and envy and competition? Um, and how do you see through that for real friendships? How do you not miss the possibility of love, family, and friendship in that space without also getting caught up in the rivalry? and you know, the dark competitions that happen as well. I know that's sort of a tricky question, but I feel like it's something visionaries don't crack early in terms of really seeing hearts and knowing uh, where to be vulnerable with whom you can be safe, those sort of things, yes. Mm. 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 That's, that's, a, that's a good one, BDK. Um, so, so um, you know, in the industry, I, I like to say among some of my friends that we're all here in the industry, we're all working, but we're not all the same. You know, we, you've heard my story now. Not many people know this story. I haven't shared this story publicly in, in may, maybe I haven't ever shared, shared this story publicly like this before. So now you know my story, but you see me out there like, hey, you know, actor, hey, you know, dancer, singer but you don't know people's backgrounds, you don't know their story, you don't know who they really are, right? So um, so we're not all the same. So we might look the same outwardly, you know, we might all look like, you know, we're all entertainers and but we have, we, we have, we have largely different stories. We're largely 
more complicated people. Where, 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 <laughs> like, like a preacher would say that like, man is a system, you know. So it's mm. not just me. I'm a I'm a system of, of several things coming together, right? Yeah. So so I handle things kind of differently from what from the way other people would handle it, right? So me, I'm very in tune with my with my purpose, you know. I'm very in tune with with my with my life's purpose. So I don't get into, for example, let me tell you how I handle strife, right? Let me tell you how I handle competition. The truth is I don't. I don't feel I'm in competition with anyone. So what I do is, first of all, I believe that I'm in a league of my own because I'm, oh, good, I, I'm, dealing with, I'm, I'm dealing with the one who has sent me. That's the, that's hey. the one I all these people like let's come together man i i believe that there's enough room personally i believe that there's enough room for everyone once you're in your purpose once you're in line with your purpose competition isn't any isn't what you deal with right like i said earlier i'm in competition with myself and with my greater version of myself you know so when i so so when i look i'm like Oh yeah, this person is doing well. Oh, that person is, is doing well. Sometimes, and I'll, I'll say the truth, I'm human. So sometimes I'll see something on social media, right? And some guys, hey, you know, some guy will post, hey, I'm in, you know, Dubai or I'm in the UK on this and this. And something want to pinch me and say, ah, you, where are you? You know, where? But I quickly remind myself so quickly that listen, <laughs> I'm like I'm not here for this. So this is not why I'm here. Yeah. I didn't go that experience to come and drag Instagram posts with someone. No, wow. right? There, there, is a, there is a vision that I saw. There's something that I saw that that, that burdened me all that time. Where yeah. I would be calling in my lecture hall, where there's something I saw, and that's what I'm in competition with. And that's what drives me. That's what drives me. So I go back and say, and go back to God and say, Baba God, so where are we? In the scheme of things, now where are we yes. to that? Yes, I so, I give, so honestly, I give freely. That's why I, 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 I you see me, I'm, and my wife will testify. I give freely. I'm like, take it. Like you want to learn this thing, learn it. You want to take it. You, what is it? Like you cannot, um, you cannot finish it. Like this grace, hey. this one, is take it all. Like you empty me today, empty me, take everything. I will start over, and I will still surpass it. You know, so that's how my that's yeah. So that's my um, that's my position. You know, when it comes to competition, when it comes to envy, when it comes to all these things, like yeah, in the industry, you hear things like ah, don't um, don't talk too much, you don't tell this person this, don't ah, don't um, their clicks and their this and that. me, I'm clickless. I'm everybody's my my click. I, yeah, but to balance it up now, you know, yes, you protect yourself also. You know, you don't you don't give yourself to everyone. I'm trying to balance things out here. You don't give yourself to everyone because the truth is you can't cast pearls before swine. You know, so yes, protect yourself, protect your vision, um, but just know that um, they can't they can't take they can't take from you and finish you. Just know mm. that they can't. They take from you. They, they don't reduce you. They can't. They can't reduce you. They take from you. You know, you, you you because you have an abundance. You multiply. You know, so even taking increases you. So yes, let them take from you. Yes, it, it yes. Increases you. you multiply when that happens. So so yeah, that's that's my position really. Uh uh, what's going on? Which level of wisdom is this? What happened? Go, go. What did we ask you? Why so deep? <laughs> yeah. Wow. Of course, it comes from, of course, it comes from that awareness, that self-awareness of what, what, the mm. greater picture, what the greater picture is. You're not small-minded. You, you, you understand the big picture. You yeah. understand the journey. You understand where you're coming from. You have, yeah. to, you have to walk in the consciousness of it. You have to walk in the consciousness of it. Sir, I'm having, it's just the challenges I'm not having iPhone X. I'm looking for, well, what can I sow? <laughs> when, when I receive wisdom, I must give. So I'm like, yeah. is, I'm just looking at, is it iPhone X? But the challenge I'm not having, 
that I can make. <laughs> but internally, internally, that was a season to sow. So as you're mm -hmm. listening to me, if the Lord puts it within your heart to sow the seed so I can sow it, please. But I mean, to be honest, this is extraordinary. It's inspiring. It's, you know, and what I love about it is we get to choose what we think. Mm, you, the moment a person recognizes that your future is predicted by your most prominent pro, uh, your most prominent thoughts, mm, your mm. most prominent thoughts are predictors of your future. The moment right. we get that, you 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 it, it should actually make you uh, really sober, and you, mm. you must begin to think about what you're thinking about. But what delights me is you can choose your thoughts. Absolutely. Absolutely. On purpose, you can determine what is going to be the yardstick of your choices, your decision making, your perspective on purpose, right? On purpose. Yeah. So that is how I, that's what I see here. Like you are challenging us to choose our mm. higher selves on purpose mm. because everybody has. A mm. divine DNA of love, but you've got to work what is on you. You've got to work that love on purpose. The moment we get our hearts in the right place, the moment that work is done, and you're motivated by agape, there's an unconditional desire to give to flow out, mm. and that recognition mm. that there's something that's been put on you that is inexhaustible, that even gets better the more demand is laid on it. Yes. Men, there's no stopping you. Literally. Yes. yes. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> oh wow. Like, there's this scripture I love so much. I think it's in uh I think it's in Proverbs or Psalms or something. Something about God opening his hands and every living creature feeds from him. You know, yes. so he opens his yes. hands and I think Every it's Psalm one twenty four or something. Yes, and, and they feed from him, as in, and we are children of God. See, the truth is, they can't work against you. They can't. They can't. They can't yeah. work against you. They work for you. I'm telling you, envy, jealousy, it works. It will work for you. So uh, mm. don't go into it. Getting into all of that, getting into competition, getting into it debases you. That's yes. what it does. It brings you down. It dro it drops you. You know, be like your father. Oh, this is so good. Mo Atobatele says, five-star wisdom. And I completely <laughs> agree. Wow. You've blessed us so mm. much this evening. And in the next 10 to 15 minutes before we uh, let you go, I want to take a few questions. If there are people... Um, I have one more question for you, but I don't want to be selfish. So I'm going to let the people go first. If you want to <laughs> ask a question, put it on here. We might be able to take one or two. Um, and while the question is coming, so just so that we make an excellent use of time, Daniel, I want you to speak a little bit to um, how you sharpen your craft. I know it's going mm. to be different for everyone, but I don't even mean it in terms of what you do, but how you create room for it. What I mm. find with PT life is that it's so fast-paced that many people live their lives on this autopilot, wake up, start the crazy day, get back at night, that after a year, two, three years, there, ha there haven't been significant purposeful investments in growing and becoming better. I met a person who was a friend when we were in university, smart, beautiful, bought me my, you know, my first, um, uh, there's this thing, that I can't remember, bolero jackets. Yeah, she, she, she wore a bolero jacket. I thought it was so cute. I was like, I love it. I want it. She got it for me. And she was such a leading person. I met her up because she kept saying, did you feel you? Ah, ah, wow, you blown. No. I was like, I'm not blown. No, blown. I don't know. What is that? You what, know, is that? Said, what does that even mean? <laughs> she really wanted us to see. And then we finally hung out. As she opened her mouth and started speaking, I knew that we would not be seen very often. Hmm. She hadn't grown. It was it was painful because I remember that in school I looked up to her. She hadn't grown. In fact, she was stuck in the experiences of school because not many 
significant injections of new experiences that happened in her life. So she was reminding me of, ah, do you remember? I'm like, I don't remember. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't uh, remember. Yeah. Okay, yeah. sorry. Almost two decades. Yeah. You yeah. see. Yeah. So, yeah. um, how do you make out time to be better? How do you feed your mind? How do you grow yourself? How do you grow your spirit? Right. So, um, so something interesting happened to me after I worked with Indani TV for about a year. I, I knew I had to grow. I knew I had to grow. For the, for the longest time, I'd been investing in the engineering side of me. And mm. I hadn't really, all I had for the entertainment and art was faith and passion. <laughs> I knew I had to grow. So what I did was to quit my job again and go back to school. I went to school in South Africa. I went to South Africa for three years in school. Right now, I'm still schooling. I've been back in South Africa for almost four or five years. I'm still schooling. I'm still doing courses. So I think it's, I think for me, right, I'm driven by the constant desire to improve myself. I'm, 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 I'm always, I'm driven by self-improvement. I always want to improve myself. Why? Because I see there's a picture that I have in my mind. There's a picture that I saw that I have to get there. And that picture, the closer you get to it, the more it expands and you find out that yes. oh, more. there's another side to this thing that I did say, ah, okay, let's go, you know? Um, so so, so um, I, I think for me, and I'm sure you can apply it to yourself, you have to be a life student. You have to just keep learning. You have to keep pushing yourself. You have to keep driving. I mean, you can learn in so many ways. I'm not going to tell you how it applies. I don't know how it applies to you. But you have to just come to terms with the fact that in this life, you, you're, going to be, you're going to have to be a life student. You have to go into, you're going to have to learn every day of your life. That's one. Two, um, who do you surround yourself with? Or who are you surrounded by? Who are the people you're constantly conversing with? You realize that, you know, like, that, like DDK, you mentioned, if you had stayed with that girl, of course, you are not going to stay with her. You are not going to stay with her. But you realize that. If you were, if you had stayed with her, you'd be having conversations on that level, or you'd be trying, you'd yes. be trying to pull her oh, the way from down. Yes, on that level, you know. So, so yeah. So from time to time, I, I, I do like a, a, I, I take account. I'm like, okay, so who am I? Who am I speaking with? Who are the people around me? Who am I conversing with? Who are you know? Who, are, who am I listening to now? You know, so who good. am I hearing? You know, so it's to have, it's to check, check yourself from time to time. Do a uh, self edit, you know, self, okay. um, is it, they call it audit, self audit, audit yes. you know, and, and find out, find out who you're listening to, find out who, who you need to be listening to, who you need to, mm. how to upgrade yourself, the people you need. I mean, everyone on this, on this platform now, I'm sure you're here because you realize that you have to catch up. So you're listening to DDK, you know that you're going to experience a lifting by listening to her. So that's what I do. That's what I do. I um, I'm a life student. I const I'm constantly learning, and then yeah. I'm constantly reviewing the people I'm listening to. Who am I listening yeah. to? Who am I listening to? You know. So that's 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 pretty much it for me. Ah, no, that one touched me. <laughs> that one, that one, yeah, it's so good because sometimes we don't connect learning to our right. circle, but right. learning, in fact. Uh, we have proof that learning through resources and content is only half as transformational as mm. learning through community. Mm. Right. We have proof yeah. even with the work that we do at Immerse Coaching Company. And you see, there are people who block me at events, who you know, who will be doing jagaban behavior. They'll be trying to tell them, uh, please uh, send an email. No, ma, ma, I came because of you. Ma, ma, you mm. changed my life show up in my dreams. They'll be vibrating in front of me. I want to be my mentor. I want to submit my destiny before you. And then I just ask the simple question, which of my books have you read? I'm planning to buy it. My brother said that when they come back from Abba, they were able to, are you taking any course? No, nope, nothing. Yes. But they're going to wonder why they're not able to sort of break the measure of a limitation. Do you see? And we, we've said it again and again. There's got to be some place where you find an aspirational community of people you want to be like, 
where yeah. they gather, if you're thrown into that community, I give you just a short time, you would actually start to become that future you desire. It's real. Absolutely. Right? Absolutely. It's well, real. Well, yeah. So, so also for me, right, um, shift comes from shift comes a lot from 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 what you what you're feeding you know mm. what, what are you feeding what, what are you feeding yourself with you know what are you letting into your mind through the windows of your eyes your ears you know what are you what are you feeding what are you feeding your mind with and honestly you would stay on a particular level until you get light that will shift you to the next level. Wow. So that's, that's, the truth. that's the truth. So let's not kid ourselves. You know, yes, we are we are at where we are at the level we are today based on the amount of light that we have for that level. We are this level because it's the light we have that is keeping us here. You get another light, or you change the kind of light you're getting, you go to, you get to another level. That's the truth. Yes. So let's or we, let's just tell ourselves the truth, man. You know, yes, you want, you want to shift. You want to shift, sh get the light. Get light, you're shifting. Wow. Your paradigm shift that you need is light. Is light. Let's get the light that we yes. shift on. Yes. Let's get the light that we shift on. Yes. Just so good. And before we leave, since Daniel is talking about this light thing, mm. I feel like it's a powerful place to remind you not to dull yourself. We have halogen lamps in immersion. <laughs> like we are the light merchants. Yes. People are here who can confirm that, right? Yes. Who can confirm it to you for real? We are the light merchants. If you can't get into my visionary compass, the accelerator program, at the minimum, if you're here at the mm. minimum and you don't get into immersion as a whole, I don't know you, I've never met you. What are you doing? Like for real. And everyone who interacts with our resources, one of the biggest testimonials we get, even before all the external results, is that they'll tell you it's this mindset reengineering. Mm. Because you can't think at a different level. You can't move your life to a different level. Yeah, it's what it is. If you don't transform your mind, you can't transform yeah. your life. Yeah. And it's possible that people will hear these things and snigger and be like, and that's just the occupational hazard of being in the coaching arena. Because people have been defrauded, you know, in the case mm. of the blind people. Mm. So it's possible for people to sneak that, right? But I just hope that um, something is going to push you in the direction that changes your life and gets you to believe enough to step into what we're doing here. Mm. So you can get the visionary compass, which, I mean, is more like premium stuff at a higher level for those who are already founders, executives, building out a significant vision at the minimum. And I mean, I have Bodam on the call. Bodam Taiwo has been on my one-on-one -on -one coaching, which is like higher tier coaching for four cycles. I think maybe four or five cycles, like he's always back, right? So it's almost like, you know what happens to Barry when you pour water and Barry and you can't separate it again, and that's what's happened. So you have a responsibility to choose your belief system. You have a responsibility um, to ensure that you are not sold a lie unconsciously just because you, you want to sound woke. Yeah, Bodam has been in for five cycles. She's always coming back. She's now on visionary compass. The baby's just crazy, right? She can't even tell people how, how she's always reinvesting into the coaching relationship but literally in one year she became a whole different human being literally like a different human being i sit on calls with her now and i'll be like please who are you what, what happened right like what happened to you mm -hmm. just launching out multiple things elevating mm -hmm. changing lives herself do you see so you are responsible for your belief system don't form work and and join what uh, you know, the people are saying and be like, don't snigger because the knowledge era is upon us. It's not mm. going to stop. It's not going to shift. It's not going to change. And mm. Daniel has given the buzz goes to us. If you want to shift to a new level, you need light at a different mm. level. I'm going to take uh, Bolin's question if I find it because so many things have now happened. We'll take that question and I'll be out of here. Her question is, how has your faith been a distinguishable factor in the in entertainment industry 
if you mm. if you know, are distinguishable is like big English mm. like it's mm. either big grade, but I think I sort of get what she means though. Like mm. how does your faith stand you out? How do you navigate yeah. being a person of the kingdom, yeah. not yeah. also be religious? How does it work? Okay, so um I think I think my faith permeates in everything that I do, right? Mm. I think I think the fact that and I say this very freely, you know, the fact that I have an anointing is obvious in my work. That whatever whatever I lay my hands upon it prospers, first of all. You know, Ooh. even without without trying too hard, without trying too hard. If I'm in it, I tell people, if I'm in your film, the film will do well. <laughs> you know, so there's a blessing that comes from the fact that I am a man of faith or I am, yeah, I, 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 I have a relationship with God. There's a blessing that comes upon every work that I do on that level. So, and, and then of course, God prospers me in everything that I do. The Bible says, whatsoever he doeth shall prosper, you know. So that's it. That's that's the first level. Also, I um I'm, I I do faith based faith faith based projects as well. I don't know how many of you have seen Still Falling. It's showing. Didi, have you seen Still Falling? <laughs> no time. No time. Didi, no time. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No. No. But uh, but yeah. So Still Falling is showing right now in the cinemas. It's still showing. It's a faith based film. You know. Um. I have. I have a faith-based family in entertainment also that I work mm. with, you know, and we create, we create faith-based faith -based content, you know, to inspire people, to bless people, elevate people, all of that. So my faith also reflects in that. And personally, as a, as a, um, as a content creator, as a storyteller, it's my life's work. You know, the reason, even before acting, before acting, the reason I got into this is to inspire people, is mm. to tell stories that will change lives, to bring people out of darkness into light, into light. Like my, I, I, I might not be called into, you know, um, into quote and unquote. I'm, I'm, I'm very careful now into the Christian film industry, you know. But my calling is to do films, create films, tell stories that will elevate people, bless people, give people light, you know, to shift them from one level of glory to another. That's my calling. That's my primary calling. You know, that's why I'm here. You know, it might take some time to build to that level of expression, but I'm clear about what I'm doing here. Mm. Very clear about what I, there, there's, there, there are no mistakes about it. Wow. This has been so profound. So profound, so inspiring. What? I love what Bodam says. She says, there's a confidence that Mr. Etim Effion has that can only come from, with a knowledge of who is backing him and who sent him. It comes through so strongly. Give it to me one word so that Daniel knows how we feel about tonight. One word that describes this talk show edition. Before we close out, can this is so profound. Maureen says, clarity. Excited, excited for you. Mo says, man on assignment. No ambiguity there. So good. Fantastic. This has definitely been such a great time. Daniel, I have you to thank for making our time from your busy schedule. We had our heart, you know, right in our mouth, just waiting for your uh, PA. We worked with your PA. Uh, not your PA, but, but your PA. That, that I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what to talk about. So you see, <laughs> I, can't even, I can't tell you what I'm feeling. <laughs> but she, <laughs> I love her so much. She did a fantastic job. You know, just to see her begging her. We've got a. I mean, we've been so blessed just having you here tonight. Thank I have some more words. Um, deep people have said deep, I open <laughs> inspirational, wow, challenging. Jesu Duni says, uh, Jesu says so much light. Bolande says, inspiring, authentic, visionary, enlightening, inspiring, blessed, wow, wow, wow. yes. Uh, Ulushe says, it's been a great time and just reinforces my conviction, and I'm glad I've been able to do that for you. We've come to the end today of the visionary talk show with 
Daniel Etim Etiong. It was meant to be the final end, but uh, some people have been posting me to have uh, a last session on Wednesday where I just go live alone and I can take a lot of your questions. You need to let me know if you want me to do it because I will have to post Mr. Pumi. Because go time. Have, uh, yes. <laughs> you guys have to let me know. You've got to confirm to me you want me to come on live on Wednesday uh, so we can take some other questions that have been asked all through the course. So you have to put in the comment section, DDK, come over on, on Wednesday. We're going to be here for you. Okay, I got a please. That is so encouraging. Someone said, please, I've been toasted. Okay. Okay, I love it. We want. We, want, we need it. Okay, please. Not bad. I will do it. Okay, please come over. It has worked. I got you. I'm going to show up. Okay. So we'll see you on Wednesday, you family members. It's been an extraordinary experience doing this with you. And thank you so much, Mr. Daniel Etim Efiong. You are a well of wisdom. And we are so blessed to have you, so blessed to learn from you, and so inspired by the things you've taught us tonight. God bless you. Um, yeah, any final words mm -hmm. from you? Hey, first of all, thank you. Say thank you to everyone who has listened. Uh, um, Okay, I want to say thank you. Thank you for believing in me. Thank you. You keep bringing me to talk. I'm like, hey, what am I going to say? <laughs> what, what do I want to say? DDK, what do I want to say to DDK, especially? You know, but thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much for bringing me again and again and again. Um, I just want to say this in rounding up, you know, believe, believe in your believe in your dreams, you know, believe in your, believe in your dreams, all value. You know, um, and it works. The truth is, it works. Giving me that, it, I promise you, from that very confused guy to a guy now who has clarity, who, you know, who, who keeps growing, you know, who's growing yes. every day. I promise you, this thing, discouraged, you know, keep pushing. You're on the right path. The fact that you're yes. here is testament. That you're on the right path. Yes. So congratulations to everyone here. Thank you. Wow. Thank you so much. So good night, everyone. Have yourself a beautiful morning. Good night, guys. Good night. And we'll see you on Wednesday. <laughs>